from a guy I wanted to date with, literally, <laughs> at um, Texas A&M. Oh! Wow. <laughs> okay, are there, is, are there any Aggies? Wow. Are you an Aggie back there? Just give me your Aggie card Loud back right now, because I didn't get one. What, Loud when I was at Texas A&M. Don't yell at her, sorry. That's okay. My, my, I have a freshman at UT who keeps buying me orange golf shirts. So. <laughs> and they burn my skin. But anyway, I went to Texas A&M, and um, there was a DJ from Brian, a top 40 DJ, Jeff Lowe. Oh, he was so cute. And I went to a party, and he was making fun of the new radio station they were building at Texas A&M at the time. And I thought if I auditioned for the radio station, he would ask me out. And he never asked me out, but I was on the radio for the next 22 years. So um, I like to start my speeches around the country. I used to be cool. That pretty much sums it up. I was a rock and roll DJ just a couple of blocks from here at 510 Love It, which is now like high price townhouses or something. Every time I drive past it, I wonder who lives in the apartment that used to be the control room. <laughs> oh, because the stories we could tell, and we won't. Um, so that's what I did. I did rock and roll radio for 22 years here in Houston, and through a series of other businesses we'll get into, I ended up here today. So Great. And um, so when you got out of radio, um, we'll talk a lot about when you were in it, because you had some really amazing experiences as well while you were there. Um, what, what was your impetus for kind of going out and becoming an entrepreneur? Because you've come out, now you've done, you have money. a space store. And money. Money. <laughs> uh, to be quite, to be perfectly honest, I was pregnant with my first child and the radio station and I couldn't come to agreement on any sort of maternity leave. Um, it was just not cool to be in rock radio and pregnant, you know, it just wasn't. And it was sort of out of necessity that I was kicked out of the nest and it was a very frightening and scary thing at the time. And I look back now and of course it's the best thing that ever happened to me because I learned I could do anything and survive. And and that my talents weren't strictly in giving you the weather and playing Stairway to Heaven and Freebird. Um, I was the queen of self-promotion and I literally, I'm a firm believer in ask for whatever you want or need, just ask. Just, you know, quit being a sissy, uh, just ask. And for the most part, people will help you. And I went to this um, PR woman, Gwen Griffin, who's just uh, a powerhouse. Make me serious if I got into PR and marketing and took everything that I've done for me and did it for individuals or companies. And literally the first thing she said to me is, when can you start? So it was unbelievable confidence that she gave me to strike out and start doing PR and marketing and all kinds of other things. Yeah, that's great. And you also started a bunch of online businesses too. So you have the space store. I started the space store.com because I got tired of people asking me if I would go buy them that nasty astronaut ice cream, which by the way, has only been in space one time when we sent it in a supply mission to a friend who said, really, you sent me like that nasty astronaut ice cream to the space station? <laughs> like, yeah, somebody's got to eat it up there. Um, Otherwise but I, got tired of, so yeah, I got tired of people asking me to go up because the only place you could buy a NASA hat, that nasty, ass, uh, nasty bit, ice cream, whatever, um, was on site. And the only way to get on site was with a badge or a parking pass, which I had since I was married to a, a, a NASA pilot. And my agent called me one day and said, I need some things for another client. Where can I go? And I said, well, I'll have to do it for you. And he said, that's stupid. Somebody should, there's not a catalog or anything. And I went, no. He goes, well, somebody should start a website or something. This was like in the mid nineties. And uh, I thought about that literally for six months to the point I was waking up at two o'clock in the morning making notes on if I started a NASA store online, what would it look like? You know, I could barely check my email. So the fact that I was thinking I could do e-commerce and I think the week we launched the space store.com is the exact week that both time and Newsweek declared the internet dead, that the boom was over. <laughs> and uh, so the space store.com became the largest of its type. Um, 
I'm also a firm believer in, in you can just really make up anything as you go and people will believe you. So our tagline was the largest space related store in the universe because we were the only space related store <laughs> in the universe. Eventually NASA followed and got their, uh, theirs. Um, I ended up selling it to a NASA contractor because they believed we were the biggest store in the universe. They literally never checked. They bought it, paid me, signed the contracts and then went, it's in the basement of your house. <laughs> you don't have a warehouse? No, there's no, we bought it, it's yours. So they moved um, into your basement? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I do have the only basement in Houston. So another another side story. Um, but I ended up selling it to them. But literally when I started the space tour, I bought HTML for dummies because I could not afford to hire any sort of web person. There were no storefronts. I found a banker in Cleveland, Ohio, who was moonlighting building storefronts. And when it would break at you know midnight, I'd be waking up Charlie the Wonder Husband, who was a computer geek, going, fix that. Uh, I was still on the radio. I was doing some talk radio then. And I interviewed the consumer reporter for Good Morning America and just mentioned what I was doing. This was around Thanksgiving. And on Black Friday, he mentioned my store, which crashed it, just mm. totally crashed it. Um, but we were able to get it going again. And that was like the first week I actually made money. I was up at, you know, all hours of day and night packing t-shirts and trying to send things off. And all of a sudden I became this, uh, e-commerce SEO, you know, expert because I was the only one anyone knew who was doing it. And uh, it just sort of grew from there. Yeah. So, I mean, what I, the reason I asked you to tell that story is because I think a lot of people in this room have good ideas from time to time. And maybe um, I've had people come to me before and say, hey, we should start, you know, a group like this in the woodlands. And I look at them, I say, okay, then do it and start it. <laughs> you know, so I mean, there, there's a lot of opportunities I think people miss. Don't you agree? Oh, one of my favorite coffee mugs forever and ever and ever. I literally got a tear in my eye when it finally just disintegrated. I was one of the first customers for a tiny little store that a guy was running out of his garage called Amazon.com. I just thought it was fascinating. And literally the first year they were in business, he sent a coffee mug to every single customer who had ordered. That was a quote from Albert Einstein that said, if at first the idea does not seem absurd, there is probably no hope for it. And, you know, which by the way, I stole that little trick. Every year we would send, until it got too big, we would send every single customer a note and a special discount code the middle of October. And a, a little, I would literally call my vendors and go, do you have any little toys, tchotchkes, something that's not selling that you'll give to me or sell me cheap? And we would send it to every single customer and say, you are one of our best customers at the space store. Thank you. Here's a 10% discount code. And I stole that from Jeff Bezos. Awesome. That's a good person to steal. Stuff that's from. a nice thing. <laughs> steal. Take, if, if, if somebody does something for you, you go, oh my God, that's a great idea. Then use it. Use it. Take it. You give them give credit it. later on. <laughs> you can give out all that nasty ice cream from the space oh God, next yeah. year. It's like chalk with sugar. Yeah. Um, so you also started um, Smart Girls Rock, and, and this is a really cool organization. Could you talk a little bit about that? People used to come into the space store and say, I love this. I'm so glad I found you. Now, where can I go buy something for a girl? So they would get a dissertation from me on, you know, women are astronauts too and women are scientists and your daughter granddaughter niece whatever has a better chance of becoming an astronaut than a princess so quit buying her the damn tiara and buy her a science kit these poor people they like you know wanted to chew their arm off and get out of my store it's like Rah! and so finally i i created a hat dusty rose i, ref I refuse to call it pink it's a lovely purse i hate pink um, so it was a dusty rose hat and it said future astronaut on it. We had it embroidered and at the last minute I had them add on the back, smart girls rock. And that literally came from astronaut Katie Coleman who went, you know, smart girls do rock. We need something to convince these people. Um, and it, it became a huge catchphrase around the store. And then when I finally told the company that bought the space store, you must learn to sell t-shirts yourself. I'm done. I need to move on. They didn't want the trademark and gave it to me and I took it with me. So Smart Girls Rock has gone through several incarnations. Um, 
And then I decided about a year ago that it's not just girls, it's, it's, it's guys. It's girls and guys, especially in high school, that we're letting drop through the cracks of society. They're trapped in this horrible circle of poverty. They can't get out. Um, they, people say, well, they've got computers at school. Well, yeah, but then they have to leave. Well, why can't they just use them after school? Because they don't have transportation. This is a whole nother interview. Long story short, I buy Google Chromebooks for high school students in need who have good grades. They've been nominated by teachers or counselors. They just need a friggin' break. And a Google Chromebook is $230, you know, signed, sealed, delivered to me. I give it to them, no strings attached. It comes with my, my email and my phone number. And I've given away 54 this year. My husband and I buy them. I harass friends. I tell them, you pay that much for a purse, um, <laughs> high heels, a golf club, a bottle of wine. Just give me a check. So we've done about 54 this year. Some of the kids I hear from, some of them I never hear from again, but I don't care. I've given them a key to the outside world and hopefully they do something with it. So. No, that's great. And, and you know, next month, just so, you know, as an ad in, inserted casually in the conversation, um, we're doing the social media breakfast um, gift of guidance where we do help a nonprofit to uh, build out their social media plan for 2015. So. Mm -hmm plan to be here for that next month too. But I, I think it's really important if you're an entrepreneur or you've had some success to give back to the community. Do you oh, agree? always, always. I think that's where the majority of my success has come from. Yes, I have a very strong work mm -hmm. ethic. Uh, I was raised by a dad who was an entrepreneur who always said, never do a half-assed job. You know, that was how he spoke. If you're not going to give 110%, don't do it at all. That's just how I was raised. But I also was raised by a, a mom who has such incredible uh, caring for, you know, squirrels and ducks and runaways and anybody in the neighborhood. There was always somebody at our house. Um, and I've just always felt like the more I give, the more I, I give back. It's, it's, it's really an amazing thing. It's, it's karma, whatever you want to call it. Actually, that's interesting you say that because most recently, you had a tip like that on um, your um, on your daily website. My success tips or da my daily. I always say it right. your, your daily, daily, success daily success tip dot com dot com. Um, you guys can sign up for that. She sends you an email every day and giving you a really amazing tip. And and m many of them are really just thought starters. Some of them are actual things like how to you know redo your settings on your Facebook or it's app. a deal or it's or yesterday it's, it was you like, know don't buy crap you don't need yesterday it was change your password on your uh, your webcam at home because yeah. people are watching you in your underwear I mean it's awesome. 73,000 webcams people just kept the default password let me hit you right now let me just bump you on the head if you've done that <laughs> I have to change mine because my son is stalking us from college like really that's just creepy that is creepy, a little, but he might miss you. Um, I so, don't care. It's creepy. <laughs> um, what, one of the things I wanted to say about that is that is a work ethic. Every day you have to get up and make one of these tips. So can you talk a little bit about how your daily success tip.com started and sort of why you do it still? Well, first I wrote a piece for fastcompany.com. People always say, will you, will you go have coffee with me? I need your advice. And I give them my advice and they go, yeah, but. <laughs> You know, and it was simple stuff like, well, yeah, but I'm not a morning person. You know, it's not about you. <laughs> um, so I, I just got mad at somebody that had asked me to meet with them and then argued with everything I told them. So I slammed out. I mean, I literally was like breaking the key. I was just mad. And I typed this thing. And I was pissed. And I posted it on fastcompany.com. And it went viral around the world for a year and a half. I think I got like 2 million hits it went, and it went viral in a different country every month, which was really bizarre, but it was five things to do every day for success. And people started sending me things. So that turned into. Well, of course, it's like the space door. Two o'clock in the morning, I'm waking up going, hmm. So um, I just released the third book in the series. There's eight in work. I want to do a travel version of it. I mean, so it's, it's gone up, gotten out of hand. But that's where it all came from. But I just, I find these little tidbits. I'm a news junkie. I get up at 4.30 or 5 every morning and spend an hour going through news sites, social media sites, uh, the top videos 
from the last 24 hours on YouTube. I'm just an information junkie. I am. Perfect example. Three-year-old son, pregnant with the next one. I'm not even realizing. to be something I believe in. It's got to be a, a company that I support. Um, so when you ask me what my Google Analytics and stuff are, I say, oh. 
She has it hooked up, thankfully. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. all hooked up. And if anybody <laughs> ever wants to, you know, become a partner with your daily success tip, take over that side, you just go right ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. So um, how have you used social media? You talked about starting on Facebook to build your business. I mean, how, how has this kind of come about? I just like it? Facebook because I finally realized... You can look up Dana Steele, and there's two Dana Steeles. One is the fan page, and one is Facebook. And if I ever get five minutes with Mark Zuckerberg, he is going to get a piece of my mind. Get me to one page. Um, but on my personal Facebook page, it has become my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's a year and a half ago. She's been hiding it for about six years. So we're in the final stages now. It has been cathartic to be able to share with you the the humor, I have a sick sense of humor, so I find the humor. Last night I had the caregiver breakdown. I hit my wall for the first time last night and all I did was post a bottle of wine. That was my Alzheimer's update. And my family left me alone and I watched Californication and drank an entire bottle of wine. That was my therapy. But that's what I love about Facebook. Facebook is a community. Facebook is your neighborhood. Facebook is your street. Facebook is your friend. Facebook is your family. Use it as such. If you, you know, ate blue yogurt today, I really don't care. Um, don't post it on Facebook, but share interesting things, share funny things, share anger. Just how would you talk to a friend? That's the best advice I ever got in radio, and I use it on stage, and I use it um, when I write my post. I would literally go back and change post to try to read them in this voice. I used to have a program director who would hotline me and say, you did it again. Never use the word, all of us, all of you in here, out there. It's cold outside. It's warm in here. Actually, it's freezing cold in here. But he said, no matter how many people are listening to you, and this translates to an audience and it translates to no, no matter how many people are reading you, everybody has one brain and one set of ears, and they want to think they're special. You want to think I'm talking to you. So more often than not, I will always change things to we and you, not I use one password today. We use one password. You can change it on your computer because it makes people have that connection. I'm one of the most recognized female names in all of Houston radio ever, and I haven't been on the radio for years. But it's because I developed this one-on-one this -on -one rapport when you talk to people, and it's just, it's the best advice I ever got. And so I think that's why I like Facebook, is when I write on Facebook, I don't write like I'm writing to a group of people. I write like I am writing to my best friend every single time. Because if I have let you into my personal Facebook page, as far as I'm concerned, you're in my living room, you're over for dinner or a glass of wine, and I'm going to tell you what I think. So... That's there. great. And and no, I mean, this, this is great advice, I mean, for individuals and also for brands. I mean, could brands you... should talk to brands. Don't talk to your, your constituency back there, you little political interns back there. Um, remember, your constituent, constituency could give a shit about the rest of the neighborhood. 
all they care is about their yard and their family and their street and their street light. Talk to them that way, even on social media. You know, everybody, what's the number one thing we all think all the time? What's in it for me? Right. And, and so you've kind of built a speaking business and stuff. And you go talk to business leaders all the time, too, right? About, I mean, you talk to mommy bloggers and, and us. Thank you. Um, but tell us kind of what you would tell a, a business um uh, Group. Like if you had a bunch of CEOs sitting in front of you, what would you, you say? You know, it's no different. That's why because they don't know what to think of me. Because first of all, I won't wear their uniform. You know, my rule is if I can't wear my jeans and boots, I'm not coming. I won't be at your wedding. I won't be at your gala. I won't be at your convention. I won't be in your boardroom. This is how I dress. This is my comfort zone. Um, and I tell them the same thing. Nobody cares how great your product is. Nobody cares how great your business is. Nobody cares how great your service is. All anybody cares about is what is it going to do for me? Is it going to make my life easier? Is it going to make me prettier? Is it going to make me skinnier? Am I going to get laid? Am I going to get rich? That's what. That's why we all make decisions in anything, whether we're voting for somebody or we're buying stocks or we're picking out something at the grocery store or whatever. A lot of times big companies and big corporations forget to bring it back down to the simplest and, and most basic of emotions. Why do people buy your product? Why do they use your product? Why do they read your blog? What are they going to get out of it? Um, why should they follow you on social media? What's in it for them? Think about that. Every time you tweet or post anything, who is your audience? It's not about you. It's about them. What do they want? And think about that in everything you write. I have people send me guest tips all the time, which I love because that means I don't have to work. You've done my job for me. Um, but I try to think, is this my audience? I had a woman send me a wonderful tip on essential oils. I'm a, I'm a whole into holistic. I don't take any medicine. I, you know, I'm into, wow, eating right and exercise. I know it's a, it's a weird concept. Um, and she wrote me a lovely guest tip. And Carolyn, if you're here, it was a really great tip, but it didn't fit with my audience. I don't really write about health in that way. So I have to think about as much as I love this and as much as I wanted to be able to post this for her, it's not about me. It's about the people that have put their trust in me to let me into their email box or onto their feed every single day. Yeah, and I think maybe, I mean, one of the things I said we would talk about is how you can stand out from the crowd. And I think this, this kind of connection you have with your audience is really that thing. Right? Is this that's you what makes you stand care. out? Well, you have to care. How do you stand out? Don't don't do something for the money. Don't do something because well, this is what my degree is in, and this is what I have to do. Do it because you genuinely care. You genuinely like it. You genuinely are passionate about what you do, and you share it with other people. Um, are you going to get wildly rich? No. Are you going to be wildly enriched? Yes. Is that what it's all about? It is, and um, this kind of helps you also stand out from the crowd. I think too. I, there was I was having a talk with an entrepreneur yesterday, actually a different person, and he said, you know, I find that if I do, uh, if I give back to the community I, and I'm doing what I love, then people tend to give me a lot of money. That's what he said to me. <laughs> um, and I said, okay, great. He goes, I'm not in it for the money. I said, but do you make any money? He goes, of course I make money, but I'm not in it for the money. I found that we do for other people successful I am and the more money I make and it's not what I set out to do it's nice I'm not going to turn it down um, but I just again that's the mom I come from is you know we feed everyone so and it, it, it feels good it feels good to do things for other people to send people clients um, I was at a dinner the other night in Kima and met a guy who is a music supervisor. He's got a thing called musicsupervisor.com, very coughing. And he puts uh, musicians and music together with TV shows, commercials, and movies. And so I immediately came home and 
sent him an email, great to run into you, copied Earl Slick, who's played with David Bowie and Lennon and all these people, and Slick and I are always in touch. And I know Slick has been doing some of this. So I, I don't want to, I just put them together here. And, um, you know, Slick will get something out of it. Uh, I didn't do it for me. Um, I just thought it was great to get these people together and see what happens. I love to do that. And when you do that, that comes back to you. When you when you give the competition a lead, when you give just when you give things to other people and put them together, it's amazing. And and Barry literally emailed me two days ago and went, Hey, I just got curious after I got your email and I got on your website and I see you do corporate MCing and my wife is desperately looking for somebody next Wednesday night for a huge corporate event. Are you available? Yes, I am. I'll <laughs> send you that invoice and that contract right now. Yeah. So, I mean, you never know where this is going to take you. That's what I love about the adventure. I never know what's going to happen when I put people together. Um, a friend and I started doing some networking lunches about a year ago, about the time both of us found out our moms had Alzheimer's, so things have slowed down. But we would just have these lunches, kind of like this breakfast, just to put people together and see what would happen. And this woman kept saying, well, I, I'm producing this play in L.A., which to me sounded like my son has a band, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, sure, you're, sure you're producing a play in L.A. Fast forward, met the actresses, listened to the music, went, this is good. And it's got a million dollar title. The title intrigues me, Waiting for Johnny Depp which will make its world debut at Theater Under the Stars, Tut's Underground, this January, because I took it to the artistic director at Tut's and went, again, two o'clock in the morning, I can't stop thinking about this. And I know this is your bailiwick, not mine, but just listen to the music and read the script and tell me if I'm wrong. And so that was fun to put, am I, do I have a piece of the action? No, I didn't have to buy my own damn ticket in January, but put people together, see what happens. Connecting, I mean, using social media, because you really can make your, your world a much bigger place with social media and oh, with yeah. all this kind of networking. Retweeting, my, my, my nephew tweeted something last <laughs> night. I can't even remember exactly what he said, but, and then I started to favorite it, and I thought, okay, wait a minute. No, I can't favorite that. That's what he just said. Let's see if I can find it real quick. What did he say? He's a, he's a political operative in, uh, in uh, Miami, and he uh, He's a Republican, but we still love him. We've probably already blown him into like the fourth or fifth screen, just so you know. I was gonna say, I think you have. Uh, 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 oh, where is it? Anyway, I'll have to find it. But he was basically, a, don't favorite somebody, retweet somebody. Um, so that's kind of like sharing. Oh, I can't fit now. It's okay, it was, don't worry. <laughs> oh, here it goes. If you like me, retweet it. Favoriting. Is as worthless of a gesture as a Facebook poke. And then I started to, and I started to favorite it and went, ooh, retweet. <laughs> so, but he's, he's right. He's a favorite so they can relate. I know, right. I know, but yeah. it's like, you know, retweet people, share people, just share. Yeah. And speaking of sharing, um, you talked about your email list kind of growing to about 8,000, which is good. Um, and all organically people who've opted in and met you at different places. Um, tell me what, what, how you you talked a little bit about trying to quit your email list last year. Tell me about Ooh, that. Oh, I did. I did in uh, May. Well, it was May of this year. I thought, you know, we're getting ready to go on that big vacation. I'm tired of doing the email. I'm just not even sure people read emails anymore, you know, and it's on Facebook and it's on Twitter and it's on Google Plus, blah, 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 blah. So I just sent out a note, you know, thank you so much for following me on email. Um, uh, but just to let you know, in 30 days, I'm going to move the, uh, just keep the daily success tip strictly on social media. I will no longer be emailing. And the immediate backlash into the trip you know, running into people on the trip and went, are you really going to stop? But I love it on email. I don't have time or I'm not on Facebook or I'm not on Twitter or I lose things or I don't have time to get... listen to your audience. Listen to you. It's the same thing as, you know, playing music on KLOL. We would have music that we thought was just so, come in. It's okay. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? This is Bill. Everybody say hi, Bill. Oh, hi. It's not but you know, <laughs> you can go have breakfast. Go have breakfast up there. Have a bill. 
But it's just like you would have a song when Kayla really, really loved to would play it. There's no reaction to it. Or I personally think if I hear Stairway to Heaven ever again my whole life, I hate that song. <laughs> that's why that's why Lennon's not playing hates that song. He said, I am not an F big box. <laughs> that's why he doesn't want to doesn't want to sing Stairway to Heaven. But every other request is Stairway to Heaven. By God, you play Stairway to Heaven in Freebird. Listen to your audience. What are they saying? What do they want? Right. So, I mean, uh, again, as you said at the beginning, it's not about if it was up to you, you'd quit the email tip. <laughs> oh, so me, I'd be playing golf and you know, <laughs> somewhere warm right now. 16. So, I would like to open it up to. Any questions, Dana? Somebody? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, what's, your, what's the best way to run an email list? The best way to run an email list? <laughs> to grow, to grow an email list. You know, I do a lot of speaking and I remind people to sign up for yourdailysuccesstip.com. Did you get that? That's yourdailysuccesstip.com. <laughs> Uh, I drive people to the website for everything if I'm going to share a video with you. In fact, I, I did it. I was on Fox the other day talking about um, childhood and adult bullying. And I just immediately sent everybody to the Fox site. I wasn't thinking because I am a post -mile. And I usually what I do is I build a page on my website and I embed the video. So everything I post, I try to send people to my website which is, again, a lot of extra work. And hopefully, if I've done my job, you'll also see something else that interests you, and you'll stick around for a little bit and read a little bit more. So I found that to be, it's, it's, it's slow, um, but it's organic and it's consistent, and it's your audience, and it's people who appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I don't like lists, because I don't know where they came from or who they are, and I feel like I'm spamming people. So, and I get, you know, requests every day to purchase lists. I was like, thank you. I'm very polite, thank you, but no, go away. Yeah, and I think that's the same thing with other things too, like social media sites. For example, Twitter. I mean, I know that my my Twitter account is completely organic, right? So it's taken lots of years to grow up to what we've had, what we have. Even my porn stars on yes. Twitter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, my point is, is that um, whenever you have engagement with people, that's where the magic happens. It's not about who's following you, but but like, or how many people are following you, but about who is following you. Well, and it's also, right. if you go back to that you, 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 I, I, I thing. I don't say, I was on Fox today and I talked about bullying. I put it, have you ever, have you ever been bullied? Look what some people had to say today on Fox. You know, I try to put it in a way that it's going to interest you, not me, me, me. Look, here's an article about me. Here's a, a TV show I was on. Here's an article I wrote. Just lose the word I. Just lose it. Um, how many of you actually are subscribed to the year, uh, the daily success tip in the room? Oh, two. And, and how many of you just signed up in the last two and a half minutes? Excellent. Okay, so we could get pick up about fifty new daily success, and I don't pay her, so this would be a really good thing. Anyway, um, no, but I mean, it, it, they, what I like about them, I actually signed up for them at Blog Elevated. What I've liked about them is they're short. They're kind of, I mean, they're very informative, very quick, quick, informative, and stuff. We don't have to. We're all ADHD. We all, none of us have time. A squirrel, you know. It's like so. I, I try to get it to you really, really fast. And, um, you know, I learned that from this, this group of ladies who was talking about one of my, my dearest friends. Uh, I learned that from Peter Shankman. If you ever get a chance to see a Peter Shankman um, speech, I look like I'm on quaaludes compared to Peter Shankman. I mean, it is hard to keep up with that man. Um, I learned that from one of the first times I met Peter was, you know, you got to be brief. You got to be brief. You got to be re relevant. You got to be transparent. Or what's the point? Brief, relevant, transparent. Those are great tips. And one of the things you talked to me about also was about photos and email. Can you talk about what you learned about oh, photos? Oh, you know what? I discovered that people don't like the photos in my email. They tend to chat. That's what it was. You asked me what my open rate was. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I write it 
I gotta go to the grocery store. I'm busy. Um, but I have noticed that people tend to open it more. I saw uh, my open rate as I kind of started to figure that out. They don't like pictures in the email. It looks like an ad. It looks like an ad. But if it looks like it's a personal email from me, which is how I write the tip. So usually the tip is just text because then people read it. And I said, it's not so much that I went back and looked at my open rate. The way I judge things is the sheer number of times people reply to it, say this was great, ask me a question. It's the interaction after I release the tip. And I just noticed it increased when I made it look like a personal email that I was sending to just one person. Back to that, it's all about you. You know, here I sent you this tip this morning and it's just a, a quick little short email. It's great. I, I think that's, that's a really great tip right there. It's like, you know, kind of strip down your email. Yeah. Have you ever gotten an email from somebody asking you to do something that was six paragraphs long? Stop it. <laughs> I mean, I open those emails and they immediately go to read later. I could have just been told, I, you know, we, I want you to be the vice president of the United States. I would not know it was there because I, I, I open it and go, oh, glaze over. It's six paragraphs. We all do that. Oh God, look at this. I just immediately put it. If you want to get somebody's attention, do it. It's to write. They will ask for more. Then you can go write a longer blog post. Then you can go write a book. Then you can go give speeches for an hour, but you got to grab them in two to three sentences. I do want to ask about your books, but is there any other questions? And I don't remember the eighties, so don't <laughs> ask. Um, I pulled up to, uh, I was going to the convention bureau downtown a few months ago and there's like no parking in downtown Houston at that time of day. There's just none. And I was running late and it's like, oh, for God's sakes. So I pulled into the valet at the Four Seasons. I'm just, I'm just there. And I go to jump out of the car and the bellman opens the door and he goes, welcome to the Fort Bob. I'll be Miss Steele. It's been a long time. <laughs> we are. All you hang out the season today. I mean, I'm talking Van Halen. I, I'm not even going to tell you what we were doing in the bar. There were no cell phones. There were no digital cameras. We were doing it in the bar <laughs> at the Four Seasons. And this guy must have seen all this. Why, Misty? Like, <laughs> it was a fun time. My uh, One of my mentors, get a mentor, by the way. Mentor someone and get a mentor. That is just the, one of the best ways to succeed. Even, you know, Bill Gates has Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett doesn't need anybody. He's fine. <laughs> he goes to the diner and has a root beer float. He's fine. Um, but my mentor managed Sammy Hagar and went on to manage Van Halen, which is how I was able to have an awful lot of extremely wild, wonderful years. But he was also a friggin' brilliant businessman. So I was exposed to the side. I got to sit in on settlement. I got to sit in on negotiations. I got to sit in on meetings with Sammy Hagar, who is an unbelievably smart businessman. I learned an awful lot about business from Ed Leffler and from Sammy Hagar. So yeah, it was a lot of fun, but I was privy to be on that side too. Yeah, and you took all of that and you started writing books. So I thought that was interesting too. Um, you have your 101 Ways to Rock Your World. Uh, there's a one for high school kids. I mean, can you talk well, a little bit about- Well, there's one for college. 101, college. Welcome okay. to college, 101 Ways to Rock Your World. That was a gift to send my son off to uh, the University of Texas. <laughs> with, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I got one and I'm watching him with a and Buy him all my shirts. He's like, um, and there's one uh, on the golf course. I got hooked on that game. It's a stupid game, um, and then I got hooked on it, and it's still a stupid game. But um, the next one is how to write a book because I've had so many people ask. So it's 101 ways to rock your world. You, the author, uh, we're working on one for teachers, working on one for military families. Um, uh, fun fact: most people don't know about me. I absolutely love 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 to cook i am a such a closet chef um so i'm doing one with just a hundred bizarre little tricks in the kitchen that i've learned uh for just everyday people who maybe 
aren't the best of cooks, I'm trying to help you out. So, but the original book was Rock to the Top, what I learned about success from the world's greatest rock stars. And it has a lot of the pictures and a lot of the stories, but it literally is the things that I've learned, good and bad, from watching rock stars and one hit wonders for 22 years. So real quick, speed tips. Five tips that you can give us to go away with today that would make us rock social media. How to oh, rock social speed media. tips. Uh, remember, it's not about you. Lose the word I. Share. Do things for other people. And drink red wine. Awesome. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming and talking to us today. This is such a great uh, opportunity to kind of get into your head a little bit and hear what you have to say. Could you guys give her a hand for coming to talk to us? Yeah. Thanks. Um, and I'll be around for did, a little bit. Did we want to give away one of your books? Oh yeah. How about some, uh, some rock and roll trivia? Um, okay. Here's a smart rock trivia. I'll get you to hand me with those. Um, uh, Brian May, lead guitarist of Queen, had to quit school when Queen became a hit. He went back to school and finished his PhD. Dr. May has a PhD in what? Raise your hand. Psychology. No. Neuroscience. <laughs> Close enough. Astrophysics. He's an astrophysicist. He's a geek like my husband. Um, let's see. Uh, David Lee Roth of Van Halen has another career on the side. It's not radio, he sucked at that, he got fired. Um, it's something he would have done had he not become a rock star. What does David Lee Roth do on the side? You go try it? No? What does David Lee Roth do on the side when he's not in or out of Van Halen, depending on what week it is? Huh? Chef. No, no, that's that's Sammy Hagar. They wouldn't they wouldn't speak to each other. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? No, 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 no. Just another wild guess. An angel of mine. <laughs> <laughs> he is a certified EMT credited with saving nine lives wow. in Queens, wow. New York. I've been saved. A man comes his mouth on me in an ambulance. Let me die. <laughs> I've seen. Um, what's another? Okay, Gene Simmons, first salary job out of college. Now, he was uh, a Kelly temp for the Edit Vogue, which makes him the original devil weird. But what was Gene Simmons' first salaried job out of college? You people got to start reading. You can't write about things if you don't read everything. No. We're too young. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can read about it. What was Gene Simmons' first salary job? No. It was in New York, but he wasn't a cab driver, an actor. Y'all have the internet. No. Could you start looking? I was going to say. <laughs> Look no, that was his. That was his Kelly Temp job. It was literally a Kelly Temp. Y'all have like the internet. Come on. He was an award winning teacher of the year teacher. in the sixth grade in Spanish. I'm <laughs> <laughs> your son's teacher. Um, gosh, what a.